respect to a political party, in this case the Green Party, that was in a way put in the ground by the Dutchman chairman. Um, the first step is to approach a candidate or not, to determine if he can look forward on the next cycle, if he can serve this party, then that's where we get the relationship that can take us. Even if people who can formally recognize him might fail to see the legal devices that he is to and not to follow the rules. You see, the universe in the right things are just that he can come there to see us in the way to do on a true second occasion. His fellow, the Royal Society of Canada, and his senior associate member, Prince Anthony Todd, were asked to deal with him. He is also a recent former vice president of the International Feathers Association. And in 2006, he was elected as a distinguished scholar of the International Political Science. He has published 11 books and about 100 journalist articles and essays. His book, Power and Resistance in the New World Order, was winner of the Choice Outstanding Essay of the Royal Canadian College of Public Advice Edition of the Canon Note. It's also best known as the Japanese Express Edition. His most recent book is Power Production and Social Reproduction. Um, human Insecurity in the Global World Economy, which is the co-author of the book Why Big Stuff Matters, Sitting in the Back with my eyes closed. <laughs> um, his recent work is funded by grants from the Ford Foundation, the Canadian Federal Science Center, and many research funds in the U.S. or Canada. His talk today is entitled The Class of the Other Maker. Thank you. One or two people still trying to come in. Would you like to just uh, find a place if you can? Um, thank you very much for your gracious introduction, uh, Rich. I also want to thank um, the the other principals in global studies: Giles Dunn, Mark Jurgensmeyer, and also Richard Falk and Hillel um, um, Elva, who have um, made the stay here very uh, enjoyable um, and welcome, welcoming me uh, to engage in what is a very exciting program here and a very exciting Mellichamp initiative, which I think is extraordinarily well formulated. I also want to thank uh, many of the students that I see here, some of whom I've taught, uh, for, for a fantastically enjoyable teaching experience and engaging with uh, students who I think really want to make a difference in the world, to do good things in the world. Uh, a commitment that I have shared since I was also a student when I engaged in the um, um, anti-racist movement in Britain and in the um, anti-nuclear movement. So my engagement with the questions that many of the students and colleagues are interested in goes back to uh, earlier days. Um, what I'd like to do here is to give you a lecture which I've called The Clash of Globalizations. And to connect that idea to um, some recent literature and to the main themes that are embraced in uh, both the Global Studies Program and also in the Mellichamp Initiative. That is uh, the question of globalization, the question of global governance, and its relationship to global civil society. Uh, three concepts which I see as being mutually constituted uh, in, uh, in world order. So let me take you through the outline of the lecture. I hope I'll be able to get through this in uh, in the time allotted, and I've asked Rich Applebaum to be uh, my good timekeeper <laughs> and to threaten me with excommunication if I speak for too long. Um, so here's the outline of the talk. Um, the aims of the lecture, we'll, I'll sketch those out in a little bit more detail. And I want to link this to both a specific research project that I'm doing on global leadership and also to a broader research program, which I'm also uh, directing that involves intellectuals uh, both from academia and from civil society organizations connected to uh, the question of global development and its governance. And I'd be happy to elaborate on either of these things in, in discussion. Um, secondly, I'd like to try and give you some background in terms of my own uh, intellectual autobiography and how I conceptualize questions of power authority, governance and globalization, um, drawing on some examples from my own work. Thirdly, I want to reflect on the way that uh, global leadership uh, is, is conceptualized in, in, in much of the existing literature. I won't be able to cover all of it, but some of the main uh, currents in the literature, and connect that to the way that the 
the dominant perspectives do or do not integrate conceptions of global leadership with, with concepts of civil society. And um, then, in a sense, the, um, the, the main argument, which is a kind of response to the end of history hypothesis of Fukuyama. If you remember, that was enunciated in 1989, elaborated in 1992, and Fukuyama basically said that the end of history brought with it a moment of depoliticization on a world scale, that all political alternatives to liberalism had effectively, effectively been exhausted, not in practice, but in theory. Uh, and in future, the practice of global politics will be connected to what he called the common marketization of politics, which is a kind of moment of depoliticization, technicization of politics, where really existing alternatives to that dominant framework um, were collapsing. I will argue in contrast that, in fact, if you look through back to the 1980s, as we see, we read the, the history of the, sorry, of the 1990s, what we see emerging out is actually a, a range of different challenges to that hypothesis, partly because of the contradictions of globalization and some of the contradictions in the emerging forms of global governance. And I call this a class of globalizations because it re represents alternative concepts of globalization, not necessarily a pure repudiation of the concept of globalization. And it involves forces from both above and below in a dialectical process. And then finally, I have outlined, uh, if I can get to this point in the lecture, four methodological propositions concerning the way that we can think about the progressive movements, uh, which I have some sympathy with, and how we can think about their potential as a transformative set of forces in global politics. So let's start with um, relationship to um, research plans. Um, the first project that I'm going to try to integrate into this talk is a project on global leadership. And it relates to this broader project that I mentioned on governance, development, and civil society. Now, what is the, the project on leadership concerned with? Centrally, it's concerned with what I think is centrally an ethical as well as a political issue in global affairs, which is the nature of global leadership and its relationship to civil society. And I'll get into some detail as to how we can actually identify some of the ethical dimensions of that question. And then I'll go into the concepts uh, and try and define these three main concepts, uh, outline the argument in more detail. And uh, I'm going to try and connect it back to my um, earlier and current work. So if I can now start referring a bit more to my, to my notes as I get into the detail of the argument. Let me first say that um, this is the work that really originated my interest in uh, global leadership in, in a sense of, of a developed research project. It, it concerned what I call the globalizing elites and how they connected to the question of how the major or dominant forces in the principal um, industrialized capitalist countries and during the 1980s were conceiving of the, of the problem of world order and the, the changes in the nature of American hegemony within the context of that order. And again, I'll draw on that study to outline some of my ideas. Second book, The Global Political Economy, was a very large book which took a long time to work on. Um, with that was really a, a book that elaborated my understanding of what today we will call um, globalization in, in a kind of uh, broad-ranging way. Power and resistance in the new world order, which began to articulate the concept of the clash of globalizations as, um, as involving both forces from above and below in the making of, of world order. And uh, the book that I did with Isabella Backer, which is concerning uh, many of these questions, but focusing on um, um, frameworks of political economy that combine both feminist perspectives and um, international political economy and international studies perspectives to focus on the question of human security and insecurity in the global political economy. 